creating a new contact center agent in contact center, short tail contact center seven and eight. So first thing I want to do is I want to log into my contact center with my password. And once I do that, on the left hand side, I'm going to go into my agents. So I either go agents here, which is in the very front, which is your favorites, or I can click on the agents tab, click on agents, should be bring back to the same page. Then I'm going to go and hit new. Once I hit a new agent, you'll see the bottom of the screen, this is where you add it. So you'll see agent 455 modified, which means it's already created the next agent. So what I do here is I go in and I create their name. So uh, new dude, and I put his agent ID. If you are using a three digit, uh, you may have to require, if you're using extension prefixes, you may have to put something like 200, uh, 8,000 in there. Uh, or if it's if you're not using ex, uh, site prefixes, we can just give it a number. So we'll say 999. Password can be anything, but typically we keep it the same as the agent ID. Then you can choose the class of service. Standard agent will work for most. Uh, if they have an agent board, so if you have a wall board that you want them to see, you can select the wall board from that point. Um, if they have an agent queue profile, which is the single agent queue, so if you've defined single agent queues from this is where you put it. And if they're an email profile, you'd fill that out with the email address. Um, and this auto answer for incoming ACD voice calls is the auto answer feature. So instead of them, the agent having to answer, it'll just put the call through to them. Not always the greatest um, option if you're not a sort of full time sit at your desk 24 seven or you know eight hour a day contact center agents. So if I do that and I say create, it then puts that person in here and then I can go in and delete that person or what I can do is look at the rest of their settings. So I go queue handling, how their queue handling is. Uh, and then if you wanted to assign them to groups, you go into the group and say, oh, I want this person to belong to a group. So I'm going to assign them to these two groups, add them in. If they had any skills, we would go through and add the skills here as well. But this is how you can add the agents to the groups without having to go to the groups and add the agents to it. So it allows you to add the agents uh, to the groups that they're going to belong to ahead of time. All I have to do is hit save and all that information will be in here as well. So I can go by and go to say class of service. I can look at the class of service that's set up for the standard agent and what they're allowed to do. And then also class of service will tell me what agents belong to here. So these are the agents that belong to the standard class of service. If I go back to the agent board, and this is the wall board, you can now see agent uh, wall board TAC1 is now assigned to all these three people. If I wanted to say, in, for instance, assign myself to this agent board, I'll just choose my name, hit OK, hit save, and now I'm in that agent board as well. So that's it. I go back to uh, agents or maybe back to my favorites page, agents, and it's going to basically tell me who's in there and there's new dude should be in here. And if he's not, I'll just go down to the second page. And we'll find that we got new dude right there. I can also double check by going to the groups and just check the group to make sure that that person's actually in there, which we know they will be. But if I go into, um, I go into TAC1, which they're a member of, and you can see how many agents are belonged. And I hit TAC1, and then I'll go down here in TAC1 and click on agents, and it will now tell me all the agents that are in there. And there's new dude. So new dude is there. Um, and that's it. So that's how you add a new agent into your contact center.